I've just finished a book called The Embedded Corporation, Corporate Governance and Employment Relations in Japan and the United States. Uh, that's quite a mouthful, but it's a book that focuses on issues of great interest to uh, managers and scholars uh, who are studying globalization of business today. Uh, we hear a lot about globalization, uh, but sometimes it's not so clear what it means and what are its implications. One thing that people think globalization will cause is a convergence of business practices around the world. Uh, businesses will become more and more alike as competition uh, and the connections that globalization causes um, will uh, lead them to be uh, more like each other and imitate each other. So distinctive ways of doing things in one nation or another will erode. Um, there's a counter hypothesis which says that uh, although globalization is proceeding, the way that nations and businesses that are rooted in those nations succeed in a global era is by doing things a little bit differently. That's a theory of comparative advantage. I don't want to be exactly like you, uh, otherwise uh, what's there to distinguish us? So the uh, varieties of capitalism literature argues that instead of eroding national differences, globalization will uh, sustain those national differences, might even intensify them. And so we will continue to have distinctive ways of organizing economies, and businesses uh, around the world, uh, in Northern Europe, in Central Europe, in China, in Japan, in Southeast Asia, in India, and so forth. And those differences can include what goes on inside corporations, as well as the ways in which corporations are linked to each other through business groups and uh, also through innovation systems, and finally, how businesses interact with politics and national legal systems. One country that has a very distinctive way of doing business, as we've known for quite some time, is Japan. Uh, Japan has uh, both distinctive corporations and a distinctive relationship between its corporations and its government. Um, and some people have argued that as a result of globalization, that distinctive Japanese way of doing things is gradually disappearing. And I wanted to study that question, but it's a very broad question, so I needed uh, a handhold, some place to really look to make sense of this. And my place to look was at the HR function inside corporations. Now that may seem like an esoteric way of studying globalization and convergence, but actually when you study senior executives, you get to learn a lot about corporations. And by studying the role of HR executives, I was able to learn a lot about similarities as well as differences in Japanese and American corporations. Uh, in Japan, historically, the senior HR executive uh, was regarded as a very powerful person in the managerial hierarchy, and the HR function was regarded as a very prestigious and influential function at the highest levels inside the corporation. The same was not true in the United States. HR was regarded as low man or sometimes low woman on the totem pole uh, and was not seen as a particularly influential or prestigious posting. And that in turn was related to other differences in Japanese and U.S. corporations to do with their employment practices, their way of valuing human assets, and their corporate governance practices. So the question I set out to study was, do these differences between Japan and the United States with respect to their HR functions continue to persist? Um, and what does that tell us about globalization and convergence in the modern business era? The way I did my research was to come up with 14 companies in Japan and the United States, or seven in the United States, seven in Japan, that were matched in terms of the industry that they were in and their size. And then I intensively studied the human resource function inside those corporations. In addition to these case studies of uh, 14 companies, I also did a large-scale survey of senior HR executives in large Japanese and U.S. corporations. And on the basis of that research, I wrote this book, The Embedded Corporation. And what I found is a rather complicated uh, series of uh, findings.
Uh, one is that both Japan and the United States do appear to be moving in the same direction. And so you might call that directional convergence. The direction that these businesses are moving in is towards a more market-oriented employment system, more shareholder-oriented forms of corporate governance, and uh, more open or globalized economies. However, the United States seems to be moving in that direction faster than Japan. So a uh, paradoxical result is that although Japan and the United States, their corporations that is, are moving in the same direction, the gap between them is widening because the U.S. is becoming more shareholder oriented and more market oriented at a faster rate than Japanese corporations. Also, there's considerable inertia inside the Japanese system, in part because uh, it is a highly interdependent business system, and also because the Japanese are not entirely convinced that the U.S. way of organizing the HR function or the U.S. approach to corporate governance is the right way to go in a global environment. I did find evidence to support the notion that Japanese corporations think they have a competitive advantage over their U.S. counterparts as well as counterparts in other parts of the world by doing things a little bit differently, by putting more emphasis on their employee assets, by taking a perspective that doesn't necessarily privilege shareholders in corporate governance, and by still giving a great deal of influence and importance to their senior HR executives who are seen as the representative, in a sense, of their employee assets inside the firm. So uh, Japanese corporations are moving in the same direction as the United States, but they're moving more slowly and evolving a kind of hybrid corporate system that includes elements of the traditional Japanese corporate approach elements taken from the United States, but all of it put together in a rather distinctive fashion. The big question for Japan in the next 10 years is whether its corporate governance system will become like that in the United States. That's to say, a corporate governance system in which the corporation is viewed as belonging to shareholders rather than the current perspective where in Japan, in most large companies, the company is seen as belonging to employees, customers, suppliers, local communities, and shareholders, and the job of management is to balance the interest of those different stakeholders. If Japan's corporate governance model changes, then I suspect that the HR function will slide in its importance inside the corporation and begin to resemble more closely its U.S. counterparts. Finally, uh, What's interesting about the United States is that there are some companies in which HR is viewed as a powerful and important function, uh, where employees are viewed as assets. Uh, so it's not the case that uh, every company in the United States looks like every other and they all have HR functions that are relatively low on the totem pole. Uh, and what's so interesting about these companies is, is that many of them were influenced by Japanese ideas about business strategy and corporate governance that the U.S. companies adopted back in the 1980s. And we have sometimes forgotten that there was this borrowing that occurred in the 1980s. So that today there is a group of U.S. companies uh, that take seriously the uh, notion that employees are among their most important assets or are their most important assets and who give a great deal of power and clout to their senior HR executive. So you might see that as a form of convergence, except in this case, it's the U.S. companies, uh, some of them, that are uh, moving or moved in the past in the direction of Japan. So it's an interesting world, uh, very complicated to understand, one in which there is imitation and borrowing going on between countries, Japan borrowing from the United States, and the United States borrowing from Japan, at the same time as national differences persist uh, inside the corporation and in the way that corporations compete with each other around the world.